I'm dedicating this spotlight to Tanks, that one of the Eminem kids, the All Best Child, everybody favorite song. This is the real hoax right here. Melody said, one thing about Tank, he's going to hold it down, okay? If you had the pleasure of being around him, you already know he's going to help carry items in, take out the trash, and make sure you're good. He has rhythm like I've never seen before, hence why we have him in piano, wow, and production class, because he's definitely gifted. We were listening to something a couple of weeks ago. He heard a beat that the normal ear wouldn't even catch. Me being musical gifted too, I caught it and had to turn around real quick like, how, how are you stopping your feet to that hidden beat? But anyway, y'all just stay tuned because he's pretty dope at officially Eminem Kid. Yes. Little Tank the Protector. Yeah, Little Tank the Protector. What she say? One thing about him, he gonna make sure that his mom is good. He's a gentleman. He takes out the trash. He carry items in the home for you. What a wonderful child. Tank. I get the money back again. So in the transition of us changing livelihoods, I was no longer able to serve. And when I couldn't serve and I couldn't give, my whole, whole entire spirit just dropped out of my body because God birthed me as a server. And at the time, I didn't know how to serve without giving all of my personal. Now I know how to ask. I'm asking y'all for some money and I don't even feel bad about it. I'd be like, can I get $5? But some sanitary napkins that I gave three million. So I know you could give me five dollars. Mm -hmm. So when I was in the depression, it was trying to balance what is this transition, trying to keep him from wanting to off himself, trying to maintain my children on a level of lifestyle that now has to change. And now throw in there, I can't even be and do what God called me to be. I don't want to be here no more. I might as well just die. I just what am I here for? I can't do what God asked me to do. I can't provide the way I want to provide. My happiness is gone. My joy is gone. So what's the purpose of living? If you don't have a purpose or a why or a reason to live, what are you living for? Mm, mm, mm. Come on now. Come on now. I love that. I'm going to talk get it to the good stuff. It's fun to all that crap. People think I'm mean. Uh, people think I'm closed off. I pretend I'm here now. And, and because of who I am, I have to make sure I guard because I'm so open to bring everybody into my life. I, I want to save everybody. I want everybody to win. I want everybody to make money. And unfortunately, the world is not set up that way. People just want to take, 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 take. You know, when I ordered your skincare line, I didn't call a mail and say, can I get a discount? I paid my I waited for a special though. I ain't gonna lie, I'm hood rich. I waited for the special <laughs> to go up. And then I ordered my products just like everybody else. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, like and you have to you have to give and plant the seeds that you want in life before you can never receive. See, the problem is people don't want to put seeds in the ground. They just want something. To, they want something. To, no, they no. want to do that. They you call it pick your brain. They want to ask for something for free. They want to come into the network and the network and not even put nothing in the ground. So you have to plant a seed in the ground. So I'm about to get to my question. I'm about to take a shot. And by the way, you know, I was going to talk about it. We're going to talk about it. People keep asking me, why am I so tied to this alive juice? It was because I was living and I wasn't alive. And when I realized that your health is really your wealth and going through cancer with my daughter. My daughter has stage three ovarian cancer. 
going through cancer with my daughter, going through the things that are on site, can't tell my daddy's story. But what my dad is going through now, watching people um, disintegrate in front of us because of their health. So you want to give me a product called Alive and I almost wasn't living? Oh, baby, I'm just, you don't have to pay me to promote it because I'm going to tell the whole world freely and effortlessly, if you are living and you are not alive, you need to get alive. So I'm going to take a shot. And now I'm about to give y'all this tea with melon. Hold on. I'm going to have my shot. I'm going to have my shot. I'm going to get you some live when you get back. Now let's talk. Because I got some questions, man. So here's question number one. I've never watched a TV show in my life. People, like, they think I'm lying. Like, if we did a lot of tech, I've never watched this show. Not one, if not even a half of an episode. Because I don't even know how to get on on my TV. That's just the truth. So... What I need to understand when I scroll through Instagram, and I want to know why you think this, that, you know, they show these suggested posts that all of a sudden people went from loving you. I'm talking about, they was like, Mel, 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 I love you. You're amazing. You great. To now I'm starting to see posts. You a mean girl. You nasty. Uh, we don't like her no more on the show. And I think I even called and texted a couple times, like, what's going on over there? Why do these people don't like you? And you ain't really respond. So I want to respond. I want you to respond to the people. Why do you think some of public perception is they don't like you? Thank you. No. So, so <laughs> first, let me say, um, honestly, maybe these are just now becoming the suggestive host for you, but. <laughs> Out of the gate, I had people who loved me and I had people who didn't like me. I had people who saw me come in with this blunt swoop, you know, thin figure, had it, you know, had the, the husband and these beautiful children and this home and these businesses. And I think a lot of people um, felt some kind of way. I don't like to use the word jealousy, but um, who didn't even know me. And, and they looked at the outer of me and in some kind of way felt some kind of way. So I've always had people who just love me and people who didn't like me. Um, the mean girl, I think, comments that you see now or that I'm mean or I'm nasty and this and that is... Here we go. Showtime. Boom. That is because I've gotten to a place where I'm speaking up for myself. Um, I'm moving how I feel, meaning right. um, if I feel some kind of way regarding you, I'm not about to put on for the camera for you, if that makes sense. So then that comes off as, oh, she's being mean, mm -hmm. rather than us as black women understanding that it's okay to set boundaries. It's okay not to smile in the face of people who you know don't mean you no good. Like, That's it's okay right. not to shake hands with the enemy. It's okay, you know That's what I'm right. saying, to be like, no, nah, I'm good with that. You ain't welcome to this event, so I'm putting you out. Or whatever the case may be, you walked in this meeting trying to shake my hand, no thank you. Like, we're so used to putting on. And even though we know this person may not have our best at heart, our, uh, may not want what's best for us, um, may not really be um, on our team, so to speak, but we still supposed to smile. Oh my gosh, it's so good to see you, hi! Oh. How about no, right? And I think that that is where, because I am showing how I feel, it, oh, she's mean, she's a mean girl. And she's just, I mean, people who know me in real life, I've never had people who really know me in real life, like for real outside of TV say I'm a mean girl to be true with you people who are on this platform with me or on this show they never called me a mean girl yeah before we fell out I was never so a mean girl that, so I was never, that, oh, this is a great me. transition because now I got my truth we gonna find out the truth right here right now so I flew oh wait this lady got her whole butt out. See, that's why these people don't like her on Sunday. She be bothering <laughs> the good people. I can't see the comments that y'all making because I think because we live. So I'm going to have to go back and read all these comments after the live because my scroll is not scrolling up. So I don't know what the comments are saying. Y'all need to take a shot of a live though while we wait for her to come back. Y'all need to 
Go, what is my, I don't even know my website. Oh, I think it's Health and Wealth with Dr. Shanita. Y'all need to get a lot. Well, I fell in the guy her butt out, okay? I'm going to tell her. But get, just Google macaroon. You'll know why I'm alive, okay? Okay, listen. Who's the... No, I'm not. I'm going to get this. This is a fact. And you don't know I was going to ask you this, but it's bothering me because I don't like it. So I flew to Huntsville when you were filming for, uh, I think last year, year before last. I don't know what year it was, but I met that girl. girl. What's the girl? What's Girl that own a hair care line, and somebody type the yeah. girl name. You want to say the girl with name? What's the girl name? The, okay, okay so keep listening. So yes, yeah. okay. So I met this girl. Again, I don't watch the show, but you have to help me. The girl was nice. Mel brought this lady to this event. I'm talking about, I felt like you shifted the whole event to make sure that she was comfortable because yeah. she was pregnant and we were outside. I watched you serve the girl. I watched you give her your whole platform of people that were there to talk about herself and her business and what she had going on and all of those things. And I'm a real person. I watched oh, real thing. interaction. And in that moment, and I seen her and I met her and I listened to her speak. I felt there was a genuine either connection or friendship or association. I don't know what it was because that was my first time meeting. But again, I'm on social media and I'm scrolling and they're going off about the girl. And I'm like, well, who's the girl? So, you know me, I got to play the social media game because I'm not watching the TV show. I refuse. I know you in real life. I can just call you. And I'm like, now, wait a minute. Is this the girl who, like, is this the girl that that you was not nice to, but now all of a sudden she on the show and now she got a problem with you. Am I off? Or you gotta explain to me what's going on because I want to know what's going on. Yeah. It's either story okay. or destiny. Both of them doing the same thing. You have not asked me. This is okay. So you've been holding me. Because I want to be messy. I'm like, are they okay. friends? Are they not friends? <laughs> like, last time I seen y'all, y'all was friends. And, and you were nice, and I see you catering and, and getting fans and giving a girl cold beverages, and like everybody was moving. Team Stormy, let me help this lady because she's pregnant, Stormy. and she, we cut some oh, speakers so yeah. she can speak. And yeah. so I'm lost because if I'm your friend, I need to be your friend publicly, privately, and on TV. So I'm trying to figure out what had happened. She says Stormy, she called Okay, me. okay. <laughs> Question. So yeah, that that is stormy. So there were a few people mm -hmm. there. You remember yep. Mimi was there as well. So um, yeah. So no, stormy was pregnant at the time. It was Mama Moses with Melody then. Um, so whenever we wrapped last season, um, there were some things that happened that caused me to change my number and caused me to really go within, like to the point where the only people who had my number was about five people. Even production didn't have my number. It was a big. Oh, shoot. Why are they freezing this on purpose? Um, and because, like, she didn't only share with me, because she wasn't hearing from me and didn't have my number, um, she felt some kind of way about that. I saw her at the reunion. We spoke. We hugged. Um, you're That's my wife. I saw her at the reunion. You broke. My, my you were on the island. She was just an opportunist. That's all she was. Cloud chasing to get on the show. And leave this live. Hold on, let me see something. I wish this girl would come on the show. Okay. Am I still frozen? Am I frozen? I see chit chat with QT on here. Oh, yeah. never circle. If you go, I but then I won't be able to save it. The, will it save? Oh, but it was on your live. So tickets for oh, Astro yeah, City are now on sale. Get your tickets today. Yeah, do it. And don't forget to see the film in the theaters everywhere.
And I won't be able to save it. Will it save? Oh, but it was on your live, so it should save. Right. Yeah. And it's standing anyway. You ain't talking. You ain't moving. Okay, I'm going to go out. Wait. Steve Glove said you are not frozen. Somebody said we're not frozen. Keep so I'm talking, not going girl. No, oh, just keep talking. Okay, I'm so out. I'm so but they say you're not that cool. I don't have to, I can't see you. Just know that, but that's okay with me. So, um, so the reunion happened. I spoke to her. I told her she looked beautiful. Then when we came, that was October. So October is the reunion. We started filming in December. December, our first thing we had together. Even when production flew in and met with us, they were asking how is everything for different cast members. Her name came up. I was like, oh, I said, you know, I haven't talked to her in a while, but we're good. She's fine. You know, there's no issues with and I. And then the, we started in December, and that's when I heard at Kim's party the issue with um, her not having my number and how she wasn't going to DM me. And then the stuff came out about how her mom had been feeling about me and what she'd been saying. So it just put even more of a distance. I would say between our us and our relationship. Um, so, oh yeah, I I don't know. It's kind of it's interesting. It's definitely interesting for sure. But you know me, like I'll just move on and let things go and keep moving and live my life, and do my thing, um, and not worry too much about things that. Okay, and then okay. and here's my other question, because. I think people uh, don't understand. And what am I going to say? So it's you, Mel, going in and out. And I don't want you to just stop, stop the live, but it's going. They, I, they say they can see me. It's you. I told you it's you because you own that. So oh, let me see. Say something again. Yeah, it's a little off. You're breaking up just a little bit. You're going to the hotel. Let's keep talking, Janita. Oh my gosh, now her whole thing's spinning. Just keep talking. Don't you lose it? Yeah, girl. I can hear you good. Now. Now. Let's see if it keeps yeah, it's better. I think it's just a, okay. So okay. uh I got a couple questions in me. How I need you to explain to people because I think people don't get it and I'm so far removed from television, right? And I tell people that when you're on TV, you have to live through everything that you're going through mentally, spiritually, emotionally, sometimes even financially multiple times. To have to go through uh, a divorce, a separation and public can you tell them because i know you kind of said it but from like for real on a for real perspective can you tell them what it felt like like were you really hurt because some people be like oh well she didn't really care like that or she got over it too quick or she moved on too fast and i think they just seeing it from the perspective from television were you really really hurt like were you like really side swipe like yo this is not what I really wanted for my marriage or for my kids. Okay. Oh, God dang. So by the time I left um, for good in April 2020, by the time I left, I was already removed, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, before 2020, when things were happening, um, oh, my heart was shattered. I was broken. I was hurt. I spent, you know, I've shared this publicly before, like you. I spent many a days in the closet crying. Um, it was devastating. It was weird, devastating man. to see and think that what I worked and had been building with someone all this time was shattering, right? Um, was coming to end. And then at times you would have those moments of hope where it seemed like things were getting better. Because who, you know, at the end of the day, you want your family to work, right? So it would seem like things were getting better. So you're like, okay, we got this. We're going to make it through this. It's just a storm we went through. We good. Then for your heart to be broken again. And I think what happens, 
Tanita, my heart had gotten broken so many times prior to 2020, so much disappointment prior to 2020, that by the time I left in 2020, <laughs> I really didn't care no more. You know what I'm saying? It was like I was numb to that whole situation. Like it, it got to the point where it was just like, you know what? Whatever, God got to have better for me because I've gone through this for three years and this has been crazy. You know what I'm saying? I've been heartbroken. I've cried. I've prayed. I've done all this only to continue to be disrespected and walked over and disrespected by more than one person. So That's by the right. time 2020 hit, why you see me now so quickly in a place of happiness, in a place of joy and light is because literally it was a burden lifted at that point. Like I walked away knowing I would never go back. And I never went back to him. I never did. I never had a desire. I never thought about it. It ain't been no uh, run day booze, no hookups or nothing. It has no. never been any of that. So if he got um, his stuff, so when all I left, the way back together, because I got another question you might not answer. But say for instance, he went away, he got himself together, went to go get some therapy, you know, some extra well, Jesus did, sprinkled though. on top of him, and he came back and said, okay, I I want to try this again for our family. You just saying, I'm doing it. She done went through it so okay, many I'm times. Okay, I'm going to ask you a question you might not like, but I, if you answer, then it's okay. good, because I want to know. So we said we're going to keep it 100. So I live in Atlanta, Georgia, y'all. I'm running around and I see so many celebrities, some friends, some associates. Yeah. This is factual. So we're going to get all the facts straight. So I go to, I think it was like a Christmas party or Thanksgiving. I think it was Friendsgiving or something, right? And I walk in. I'm going to say the names because I don't owe my loyalty but to nobody who I'm loyal to. So I'm on here with Mel. And I run into Sheree. Now, Sheree's friends with Ebony a lecture they're really really close friends right and some other people that were in the room and i seen her and i hug her and i do the normal hey girl hey 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 what we do in atlanta took some pictures now men would say this wasn't the reason that i was on ice but i had took a picture with sheree and i post i think i might have posted it in my stories i don't think it's on my page but i think i posted it in my stories so when i didn't hear from mel I'm thinking Mel shaking me. I'm like, just when I first seen it, because I didn't know. Again, Instagram is giving me my news, which is bad, y'all. But I finally see, okay, I think they dating, might be dating, still dating. I don't know. My only question, woman to woman, that I want to do, are you annoyed or don't like Sheree? Or do you feel yeah. a certain way? about Martell yeah, okay. because to me I feel like once once we're divorced or removed or we're not together no more the other person is free to date whomever they like whomever they choose now when you have children in the mix like me I triple dog dare somebody to introduce some of my kids to somebody because y'all gonna see me on Oprah ESPN CNN Fox I'm talking about I'm going out with a bank I can say that out loud we're not doing no children introductions but I just want to know, like, the truth. Like, do you feel a certain kind of way about this lady? You don't care. The media playing games. Like, do you like her or don't like her? I just want to know. So then I know how to proceed. Okay, cool. So first, let me say this. I promise I don't even know the picture you're referring to. And you brought it up the other day. I would love for you, if you get a chance, to go to your archives, your story archives, and find the picture. And see if I saw it, because I don't think I saw it. Like, honestly, I don't think I even saw it. Um, but I don't have a problem with Sheree. I do not. I think that people... Getting the right funding is critical to small Why business success. Only NAV can help you understand what you may qualify for before you apply. Martell is the other one. I think that people have the time now. to create a problem with Sheree and I. And um, I don't know her to have a problem with it. This lady has done nothing to me. I've never hung out with her. I saw her one time when I was speaking in Birmingham. She had a booth set up on the floor. I was walking around patronizing all the businesses there. She, she was doing, um, I think, for her book. Um, but I don't have a problem. I've always thought she was beautiful. Like, I've always, you know, I used to watch Housewives, of course, too. I'm only 37, so... I used to watch Housewives. That was a show to watch. I always thought she was beautiful. I don't 
don't even know her to have a problem with her. She's done nothing to me. She ain't never said nothing out of the way to me. She ain't never called my phone or text me nothing. It's never been no issue. I think that people want it to be an issue. I think um, we're so used to pitting black women against each other that that seems to be okay if we do, if we get them two going at each other, that'd be something. I'm not about to do that. I, I'm just not. Like, my womanhood doesn't allow me to do that. She's done nothing to me. Um, so I don't have an issue with her whatsoever. I don't have... Because <laughs> you done froze again. You froze a little bit again. I think that oh, Jesus man. said move on because you froze. I want to address a comment that I seen go past, right? Somebody said, oh... I thought this call was going to be about love and self-care. This is about love and self-care. I believe that as women, as friends, when we have transparent conversations, that is love and womanhood and self-care. Again, a lot of people that are in these comments are making comments, pressing upon what you think you know, what you see on TV, or what you've seen on so I took this opportunity about things that I saw or I don't know. She started off by talking about mental health. So I think it's a balance call because I'm out of people. You know, I get prejudged. People pre assume so many things about our life. So I was like, yo, let's have a transparent conversation, be it about kids or women or on TV or what I've seen on the blogs. I want people, and I just got chills, to stop saying that self-care is only about the light and the fluffy stuff. So self-care is about uh, addressing and, and, and speaking about the things that hurt, that were painful, that you want to grow through. I think there's truth and transparency. And if anybody think I'm trying to throw my friend under the bus, I'm not. I want to do it because. And I, let me tell y'all, and I'm not offended either. I'm not offended and I'm not bothered because I expect nothing less than from Sh for Shanita to bring the real questions and the tough questions. Like she's just real like that. So I'm not offended y'all. I am not bothered. This she's not asking anything that nobody has asked me before, right? Really? Somebody has asked. I've been asked that many times. The answer remains the same. Uh -huh, people have asked me that before. Um, it remains the same. Like a problem for what? You know what I'm saying? We've never had an exchange of words, a bad interaction. Okay. Not, you at the what? beach? I want to know like the rest of the good good folks. You keep going on these vacations. Who holding the camera on the other side? Cause you be outside. And we see that you've been, to, you've been traveling a whole lot, ma'am. So if you don't want to tell us if you're dating, um, when you're open or how you date, what are the things that are important to you now? Like being married, having multiple children. We both got multiple children. We talked about this the other day about being a big package, right? We are a big package. It's not like yeah. dating a 20 year old who has no key face because, you know, I, I got to start walking in this too, child. So I want to know what it's going to look like, what it's going to feel like. They talking about tell us, Mel. <laughs> so let me say one thing that I have honestly um, learned to love um, in these past, I would say probably past two and a half years is travel. I love to travel, um, and I think some of it came from, I used to hate being in Huntsville. I had gotten to a point where I hated being in Huntsville. Um, I love being at home now, but at one point I was hating living in Huntsville just because there was such a dark cloud to me because so much had happened in Huntsville and those people.